Monzo Business Banking. It just works, so you can too. Join businesses like Target Tuition by opening a Monzo Business account. What I love about Monzo Business account is how easy everything is. It can be filtered, it can be tagged. We thought we'd have to manage our business around our bank, but that's not the case with Monzo. My name is Shin. I am the founder of Target Tuition. Apply in minutes at monzo.com slash business. To apply, you must be a sole trader or director of a limited company. UK businesses only. Terms and conditions apply. Hello and welcome to Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. I'm Becky Parker Geist and I'm your host. Audiobook Connection is your place to learn about the audiobook creative process and for authors to learn valuable tips on producing and marketing your audiobooks. This podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Thanks for joining me today. We're going to talk today about some of the differences and some similarities, but mostly the differences between a studio and a producer. And in this case, as since our focus is audiobooks, we're really talking about either a retail studio acting as producer versus a producer that is not trying to act as a retail studio for rental. So sometimes there are some similarities, certainly, and uh, recording studios can sometimes be producers. They are usually designed with the intent to rent studio space for people from the outside, for clients to come in and to rent that studio with that almost always includes having an audio engineer as a part of that package. So a producer, on the other hand, is someone who or a company that might have a client-facing retail location, or they may not, but they're not really designed to operate under the rental model. So here's some things to be aware of in this difference between these two. First of all, I want to say that if you are working on an author narrated project where you're looking for a local studio option, you will be wanting to go to a studio, a retail studio. I want to suggest that if that's your case, you might want to listen to some of the other episodes in this podcast. Episode 51, episode 152 are both related to narrating your own audiobook. There are some others as well, depending on your content. Now, if for you, having that quiet location, that quiet space, that protected, it's designed both to exclude external sounds and also to provide a really great sound internally within the studio, then you're going to need a space like a rental studio. You'll want to be asking things like, what do they provide as a part of their service? Is there, there's almost always going to be, as I said, an audio engineer who's in that session. You're going to want to know about what their billing arrangement is. It is almost always going to be on a actual hour cost basis. So that means how long you are actually in the studio is what you're going to get billed for. And then there are also questions about do they have like a minimum number of hours in the recording session? Many of them do. Typically, that's two hours. I have also heard of uh, studios requiring a minimum of four hours. So you'll want to um, make sure that you understand that before you get into the agreement. What do they include in terms of post-production? Or are you planning to take the audio and working with a different producer and you're just having your audio recorded in that studio space? So you may not be working with them for post-production. But if you are, if you're having them act as your producer, then you'll want to get clear on what those terms are as well. As I say, the cost basis is usually per actual hour, not per finished hour. And that can often apply as well to the the post-production process, typically does. 
Remember that um, when you are often when you're dealing with an audiobook producer who is not running a studio, then you may be talking about either a per finished hour, which is very different. And we'll get more into that in a minute. Or you may be looking at a project cost overall, which is the way we do it at Pro Audio Voices. You'll also want to understand what that audio review process is for you and what's included. Like if you say you're done with your review and then you find something else, what happens? Are there additional costs? Things like that. Now, let's talk about if you're contracting with a studio as a producer, here are some things that you'll want to be extra careful about. If they're hiring actors, so this is where you're not being the narrator yourself. This is where they're hiring actors for your project. If they're doing that, then they're going to charge you not only, most likely, they're going to charge you not only for the talent time, but also the rental of their studio time. The reason is because, as I say, they're they're doing this on a rental model, right? So if you're using the equipment that is a part of their studio, then you're going to be incurring that cost of rental of the studio. So that usually, because of their model, is an actual hour that is spent, not a per-finished hour. Just to make sure that we're all clear and all on the same page, finished hour means that when the audio is all done, no matter how long it took to produce it, you are paying based on the finished length of the audio. So here's the trick and the problem with actual hour basis. It does not incentivize efficiency or particular skill. It, in fact, inefficiency is actually rewarded because you get paid more. Not only is there no incentive, but you're actually like disincentivized to work in any kind of efficient way. And if your skills are not as great as a narrator, well, then you get more and more chances to, you know, to be directed, to be, have somebody work with you, to try to get it to where they want it to be. That is one of the biggest problems. Okay, sometimes a studio will use Source Connect or a system like that. What that means is that they are connecting over the internet to a narrator in the narrator's home studio. So the narrator is not coming into their rental studio. They're working from their home. What happens is then that you lose the benefit of the rental studio, that controlled quality of sound that's keeping the external sounds out and making sure the internal sound is really good, it's you lose that because the sound on that raw recording is going to be whatever the actor's, the narrator's booth is in their home or wherever they're, they're recording in. So you're paying for the talent for usually for the actual hours that they're working. Now, that might differ depending on what the the studio has arranged with the actors as in terms of what they're going to get paid. But in any case, you're most certainly going to get charged for how long it takes for the audio engineer to do their work over Source Connect. Let's take a short pause, and when we come back, we'll dig in a little bit to post-production. Here at Pro Audio Voices, we love working with authors who have a big goal in mind. They really want to reach out to their audience around the world. We're here to help make that happen. It starts with our pre-production process, where we're evaluating and determining what elements of the audiobook we can leverage to both create an excellent listener experience for your listeners, as well as drawing them to your website to engage with you further. It continues on through the production process, making decisions that will enhance and support your big goals, as well as creating a great listener experience. But we don't stop there. Once the audiobook is live, we move on to helping you market your audiobook with the Audiobook Marketing Program. Come check us out at ProAudioVoices.com. 
To schedule a call to talk about your audiobook project, click on Get Started. Now, when we start talking about post-production, let me just, before we move on, just touch on this in terms of that time. How long is it going to take? How many hours is the studio quoting for the time to take to record it? And I would say that typically, you know, something from two to two and a half times the actual, the estimated finished length would be about right for recording. With an efficient actor, it's going to take less than that. But um, it's not unreasonable to say like up to two and a half hours to do a finished recording. Now, if it ends up taking less time than what they're quoting, will they actually bill at the actual time rather than the quoted time? You'll want to double check and make sure that that's going to be the case. Now, moving into uh, post-production, if you're doing just straight voiceover, there's no sound effects, there's no music, there's only one voice, it's a very straightforward single voiceover project, then really you want to look at how many hours they're quoting to do the post-production for that project. You'll also want to make sure, because rental studios work with lots of different kinds of projects, including commercial projects, then you need to make sure that the specifications, the technical specs that they're going to produce the audio in, that finished product for you, is going to match up with the specs for audiobooks specifically. And then also just to want to mention that if you're having the studio also submit that audiobook for you, that's a whole other realm. And typically they're not doing that, but there probably are studios that will do that process for you. And so you'll want to find out if that part is included. Coming back to the post-production piece, how many hours are they estimating it's going to take them for that process. Now, again, you're going to want here to have an estimate on the finished length. That's very, very helpful in understanding and looking at the quote that they're going to provide. And so I would say on one of these very straightforward single narrator projects that it really shouldn't take more than three to four hours times the finished length. And if they're starting with quality audio, it may not even take that long. But four times is not unreasonable. However, if they're mixing multiple voices, if they're adding sound effects, that is a whole different ballgame. That process takes considerably longer, especially the sound effects. So we're really, I'm just trying to hone in on this one situation. So with a single voice, and I'm talking about single voice per project, the reason I bring this up is we had somebody come to us who had a project and there were multiple documents that were part of that. And so there were multiple narrators, but only one per document. OK, and as long as there is only one voice that is not having to be mixed in with another voice, this process should be quite simple. I would ask if they are quoting more than up to four times the estimated finished length, then what they're planning to do in that time, what do they foresee as the work that will need to be done post-production for your project? I would also ask if they'll provide a log, both of the recording session time, but also of the post-production time with some indication of how that time was spent. Because if they're quoting like 10 times the estimated finished length, I question that. You know, I think that there's, for this simple of a project, I would really question that. And then, again, if they're starting with quality audio, this is where we're talking about what's happening in the sessions that they're running. What's happening in those sessions? Are they doing a what's called a punch and roll, where they go back and restart, where the actor, they punch in when the actor picks up where they messed up? Or are they just letting it roll and then ending up with many different takes that then they have to sort through? That would be more time consuming 
and it's not the most efficient way to run a recording session. So you'll, you could ask questions like that when you're, uh, especially if they're quoting a long time, both for the sessions themselves, but then also, especially if they're quoting a long time for post-production. It's like, what are they planning to spend all that time on, right? Okay, so let's then talk about a little bit about if they're mixing voices or sound effects. I just want to make it really clear, you know, many of these studios are producing commercials, which are very time intensive. They're trying to get a lot of details, very precisely accurate and sounds mixed just perfectly. And those can take many hours, even for a single minute, even more so because they have to be so precise and fitted into a very tight time frame. That's very different. Even if the time frame is less of an issue, as it is with commercials, mixing in sound effects is a very time intensive process because you have to not only source the sound effects and even with audio engineers that have extensive sound effects libraries, you have to select the one that's going to be the perfect fit. So you might have 50 options for a tire screeching car crash that you need to select from and you want to get the one that's just right. So that can take time. But then once you have that effect selected, getting the mix just right is also a very delicate process and can take considerable time. So um, and, and then the other thing, too, is with uh, multiple voices, especially if they're being recorded in different studios, every studio has a slightly different sound to it. And so it's the job of the post-production team to get them to sound as close as they possibly can so that they sound like they're in the same space and, and no one will even notice. So now moving on to like, what are some other things? Pickups or corrections. Let's say, very common, very typical, let's say that there are some errors that need to be fixed. Is the studio acting as a producer going to charge you additional for that pickup time? Most certainly they will. Again, for the same reason that they're basing all of their work on this rental model. So their studio is going to be busy because their audio engineer and their equipment is going to be busy. And so they'll, they'll be billing you at those hours for those pickups. Sometimes they will also bill additional for the actors to do those pickups. Now, the difference when you have a producer who is working with talent on a per finished hour basis, then you're not going to have any of those additional charges. It's not billed on actual hours. It's billed on finished hours. Likewise, with a project cost basis, you're not getting charged for each actual hour that is spent. You're getting charged for the project. So these give you a lot more protection from inefficiency, from this uh, sort of being budgets that get bloated because of inefficient processes, really. So again, just to sort of wrap all of this up, the studios acting as producers versus audiobook producers, one of the big differences is the way that they run their business. The studios basically running their business as a rental actual hour kind of approach and audiobook producers typically working on a per finished hour basis or a project basis for what they're going to charge for you to get your project done. Now, you may still have questions. If you're in a situation where you're facing any of these issues, please feel free to reach out to us. We'd be happy to discuss your project with you and help you determine whether the path you're going down makes sense. If the terms that they're, you're being offered from a studio seem fair, we will do our best to provide some guidance for you. And if you're looking for a quote on a project, 
maybe you're already in conversation with the studio but haven't contracted yet or whatever your situation is, again, we'd be happy to have you reach out to us so we can talk with you about it. Our goal is to help you achieve your goals. Thank you so much for being with me today. Thanks for joining us for Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. Please take a moment to subscribe at audiobookconnection.com. The podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Learn more at proaudiovoices.com. Again, thanks for being with us, and please join us next week. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.